Welcome to Mass. This is where we hear God's word and we are nourished by his body and blood and we come together as a community of believers to worship him. And to that end, I thank you all for being here. Before I begin my homily, I just want to invite all of the men, all of the fathers, the uncles, the brothers, to come to the men's conference next Saturday. Next Saturday is March 25th. It's the Feast of the Annunciation. And so many of us, as fathers, as spiritual vicars of our own domestic church, suffer with the, the, the pain, the hurt, of seeing that our children, our grandchildren, our brothers, our sisters, our nieces and nephews are leaving the church. They're losing their faith. The theme of the conference is evangelize the family, evangelize the world, and we come together to try to confront this situation and see what we can do as fathers to help change it. So I invite you all to come. Uh, again, it's next Saturday. Mass, uh, it concludes with Mass with Bishop, uh, Bishop Mike coming to say Mass. There'll be adoration, there'll be confessions. Uh, so please come. Scott Hahn is going to be our, our guest speaker. He'll be doing two talks, and Father Rob Contran will also be doing a talk as well. Okay, enough plugging that. In our first reading, we see that God directs Samuel to fill his horn with oil. In the Old Testament times, when one was anointed, they were done so because they were chosen by God to be either a priest or a prophet or a king. Well, Jesus Christ is all three. He's priest, prophet, and king. Jesus is priest because he is the life. And Jesus is prophet because he is the truth. And Jesus is king because he is the way. A couple weeks ago, I had the, the great privilege and the great honor to baptize my own granddaughter, little Sienna. And at one point during the rite of the sacrament, we take the sacred oil of chrism and we place it on the crown of her head. And at that moment, she inher inherits the threefold ministry of Christ as priest, prophet, and king. And so it is with all of us on that day that we were baptized. Samuel goes to the house of Jesse. And when he goes to the house of Jesse, there are seven sons of Jesse who are waiting to see which one of them will be anointed as king. God rejected every one of them. And Samuel asked Jesse, is there another? He said, yes, there's one that is tending the sheep in the field. So they summoned David, they brought him back, and when David stood before Samuel, the Lord God said, there he is, anoint him. I have a kind of a feeling that David sort of lived in the shadow of his big brother Eliab. Eliab was a man of stature. And Samuel was absolutely certain that Eliab was going to be anointed king. After all, he talked like a king, he walked like a king, and he acted like a king. Why wouldn't he be a king? But what did God say? God said no. Huh. No. God does not judge things the way that people judge things. People judge things on the basis of appearance. But God looks into the heart. And God looked into the heart of David and realized that David was a man after God's own heart. That David was the one that was out in the field taking care of the sheep and doing his job and not worrying about being glorified because he was going to be anointed potentially. David was the one who answered the call. When that Philistine giant named Goliath challenged the Jewish army, it wasn't Eliab, the man of stature, who answered the call. It was David. Once anointed, once David was anointed, he no longer tended the sheep. Now he would rule the great nation of Israel, the chosen people of God. David's life had changed, and he would never again be the same. In the Gospel today, we hear about this man that was born blind. I can't even imagine what it would be like to be born blind, to have never seen a beautiful sunset, 
to have never been able to read the words of Scripture, to have never been able to gaze at the loveliness of a beautiful woman. Can you imagine what that would be like? So the Lord God bends down and he gets clay. He mixes it with saliva and he places it on this man's eyes. This is a sort of anointing. It's not an anointing of oil. It's an anointing of clay. And he places it on his eyes. Now what's interesting here is that did not immediately allow him to see. There was one more step. Jesus told him to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And you can imagine a man born blind, that's not an easy task. I gotta go somewhere. I'm gonna need help to get there. How do I get in the water? I gotta wash my eyes. You know, what? You see, Jesus called him not just to faith, but to trust and to obedience. So the man washed the clay and his sight. I won't say it was restored because it was never there to begin with, but he had sight. And when he went back to Jesus, he laid eyes on Jesus and realized that he was looking at the light of the world. So often, we experience the reality of our environment through our five senses. We discover truth by our ability to be able to see, to hear, to touch, to taste, and to smell. If I was that man born blind, what realities that we know of would I doubt? What truths would I disbelieve? Would I believe that there's such a thing as color, or light, or beauty? I don't know. Is it just possible that there is a reality that exists outside of the detection of our five senses? And I would say, absolutely. When a baby is baptized, do we see the grace of God flowing into their soul? When we go to, when we go to confession and we hear the words of absolution, Do we see that it's really Jesus who forgives? When we approach the altar and we receive that piece of bread on our hand or on our tongue, do we realize that it is really Jesus? Do we see that? Do we see that it's the same Jesus who humbled himself to become a man, who humbled himself to suffer and to die on the cross, who humbled himself to become this tiny piece of bread that we get to consume so that we have this wonderful opportunity to have this intimate relationship with him. Do we see that? Awake, O sleeper, Paul said. Rise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. Open the eyes of our hearts. We want to see you. We want to see you. And when we see his power and love, we will say, holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. And only then will our lives be changed and we will never, ever be the same.